So finally, I'll write down the answer for you guys. Ladies and gentlemen, this right here, shoo, 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 done. Okay, this is going to be my last video on convincing people. Please use the DM method for integration by parts because they are really the same. And I know a lot of people, they don't like to use the DM method because they think that the DM method is just a bad shortcut to integration by parts and the students wouldn't learn anything by doing the DM method. But the truth is, the DM method is just a much better way to set up integration by parts problem. So I'm going to show you guys how exactly I teach integration by parts from scratch. And then hopefully by the end of the video, you will start to believe in the DM method as well. So here we go. Firstly, for integration by parts, it's just a way to undo the product rule for the derivative, right? So let's take a look at if we have to differentiate a product of two functions, and I'll just call them to be u and v. And the product rule says, I will keep the first function and then multiply by the derivative of the second, so that will be dv. And then we add the second function and multiply by the derivative of the first. So this is the classic derivative product rule. And now I want to get rid of this derivative by integrating. So integrate here, integrate here, and integrate here. This is cute, they cancel. But you see that we have two integrals on the right hand side. That's not what we like. I want to move one of the integrals to the other side so we can isolate just one integral on one side. And traditionally, we move this one to the other side. So I will just subtract the integral b du, subtract the integral b du, so they cancel. And I would like to write this down first. We have the integral u dv equals this, which has no integral, just u v, and then minus the integral of v du. And this is the so-called integration by parts formula, the traditional u dv setup. And let me just give you guys an example real quick. Let's take a look at the integral of x squared times ln x. This integral requires integration by parts. And the truth is, anytime you have x to some power p times ln x, you use integration by parts. But suppose, I don't know. So if we take a look at this integral, if you look back here, the idea is that we want to break down this integral into two parts. One part to be differentiated. You see the u? We want to get to du. So we have to differentiate the u. And then here we have dv, and this right here has v. So we want to integrate the dv. We have to break this down into two parts, one part to be differentiated and the other part to be integrated. So let's do the labeling. I'm going to put down the u right here and then dv right here. So what should we do though? Hmm, let's think about it. Always try to choose this one first because it's harder to integrate. Do you really want to put ln x right here to be integrated? No, because to do this, we actually have to use integration by parts, so no. And with that said, it seems that we have no choice but to differentiate ln x. So let's put that for the u, and I will put x squared along with the dx for the dv. So set it like this, the traditional u dv setup. And I will have to get to du, so we take the derivative right here, and the derivative of ln x is 1 over x dx. And we will have to integrate both sides so we can get to v. And the integral of this is just one third x to a third power. Don't worry about the plus c. Just put that down at the final answer. So this is the preparation. And now check this out. The formula says the integral of u dv. We have the u right here. And then the dv right there. That will be equal to u v, which is just the product of this and that which is this diagonal, all right? So let's go ahead and put that down, and I'll write this down first. We have one third x to the third power times ln x. Very nice, huh? And then check this out. We are going to subtract the integral, and the inside is u times d, v times du, which is what? Just the product of this row, okay? So you see, we have the v du, I'm just going to write this down first. We have the one third x to the third power times one over x along with dx. And the beauty of this right here is that the product of this row will give us this integral that we can actually do. Because we can simplify this, we get x squared, integrate that, 
we get one third x to the third power times one third. So I'm just going to write down the final answer for you guys. One third x to the third power ln x minus one over nine x to the third power, and then we are all done. Plus e. I call this the second step in my previous videos, where if you can integrate a product of a row, you stop and just work it out. Usually, you might just need some basic u sub or maybe reverse power rule like this. So that's it. And now let's talk about what's the DI method though. Here's the deal. If you take a look right here, again, one part is to be differentiated, the other part is to be integrated. Instead of putting down u and dv, could I have just put down d and i? I'm just going to put one part to be differentiated and the other part to be integrated. Sure, right? Okay, good. On the side, I'm going to put on plus minus to set up. Why? Because each row, it's an integral. I'm going to differentiate on x just like what we did earlier. And I'm going to integrate x squared. So you see, this times that is the original integral and it was a positive integral. Why do we put on the minus? Because we have the minus integral here. Yeah. And now check this out. I'm going to differentiate L and X. And this is so wonderful because when you have D, that reminds you that we have to differentiate L and X. If we have U here, that doesn't remind me anything. U substitution, no, not here. Yeah. D, differentiate L and X. We get 1 over X. E I integrate, that doesn't really rhyme. Integrate X squared, we get 1 third x to the third power. That's exactly the same right here. And then what you do is, look, we take this times that. That's the first part of the answer. Huh? And then we multiply the second row. And we multiply the second row. We put that inside of an integral. And that's a minus integral from the formula. That's it. And I know you guys have seen videos like this on Instagram. Yeah, I make that, of course, where I just do the DM method in like 15 seconds and it looks so wonderful, but it's just integration by parts. Before I show you guys the next example, let me compute against this real quick. Alright, check this out. You see, here I put on U, here I put on DV. And then the next row we have DU. We differentiated that, and then here we have V because we integrated that. And now, if I put on the D right here, and the I right here, and then the plus minus here, you see, UV, UV times this thing, two things together, uh, subtract the integral of this times that. UV minus the integral of V DU is exactly like that. The integral of u dv is that. So this thing right here, it should be enough to convince people that they are equivalent. But now let's really take a look at how we can really just do integration by parts if we keep on going for a few more time. So this integral gave me 6 million views on Instagram. Right now I will actually convince you guys that the DM method is truly legit. Check this out. I will do it the traditional way first, u and dv. Earlier, we pick x squared to be integrated, but if we do that right here, we will get one third x to the third power, and that means we will have to differentiate cosine x, and then the du here is going to be negative sine x. And if we do this times that, that's actually a worse integral than the original one. The power is bigger, and we still have trig function. No, that's not what we want. With one being said, we'll just kind of switch the choice for u and dv, and hope for the best. It's the best, let me show you. We are actually going to integrate cosine x. And I'll put down the dx right here. So this is the dv part, and we will be differentiating x squared. And now check this out. Differentiating this, we get 2x dx, and then integrating this, I will just write this down, integrate in your head, and then we get positive sine x. Don't put on the plus c. And now, this right here tells us that we take this times that, we will get x squared times sine x, and then we multiply 
these two things here. And you have to remember that it's a minus integral and we put these things together inside. And let me write it as 2x times sine x. And we have that dx here. But guess what? This integral requires integration by parts again. So let's go ahead and do it. So I will pick u and then dv. u is 2x and dv is sine x dx. Why? Because when we differentiate this, we will just get 2 dx. And when we integrate that, we get negative cosine x. And you see, this times that, it's a much easier integral than this one, and then this one was easier than that, and so on, so on, so on. But anyway, we'll just proceed. But make sure that you know this is minus, and then we put parentheses. We take this times that, we have a negative, a lot of negatives already. That's no good. It's dangerous, right? Anyway, this is 2x times cosine x. And then again, minus the integral of this times that. So we will have a 2 here. And then let me just write down negative cosine x like so. And then we have the dx here. Wow. So I will close the parentheses right here. Good. This right here is just a positive 2 integral cosine x. But let me tell you, I'm actually going to use the integration by parts again here one more time. So take a look right here. I am going to just put u to be 2 and then dv to be negative cosine x dx. And then du is equal to 0. The derivative of 2 is 0. Don't put, don't worry about the dx. And then right here, v equals the integral of that is negative sine x. This times that gives us the last part of the answer. And again, this has a minus and then parentheses for this integral. And we have 2 times negative sine, so negative 2 and then sine x. And finally, when we multiply these two things from this row, 0 times anything, just 0. So whatever integral 0 is actually a constant. So that's pretty much it. But the problem is that we have to just make sure that we keep track of the positive sign, negative signs, and all that, right? Which is quite complicated. I'm going to stop right here. Because let's take a look at the DI method. So check this out. D and I. I'm going to alternate the sides on the side. How many do I need? Maybe I don't know. Maybe I'll just put on a few just to get ready. Why do the sides alternate? Because look, here, originally we have the minus because that's from the formula, right? Integral of u dv equals uv minus the integral of v du. That's why we have the minus right here and also right here. And why do we have a plus? Well, you see that this integral requires integration by parts, and we will have another minus integral, right? This minus times this minus give us the positive, right? So it's minus times minus, the sign alternates. And then the next one is this minus here, but instead of another one. And good luck with keeping track of the signs if you have to do the UDV setups, right? Crazy stuff, much better here. And now I'm going to differentiate x squared and then integrate cosine x. And we are going to do the things that got me 6 million views on Instagram. I'm just going to differentiate this one time right here and also right here, integrate this one time. And notice this is just that. Same thing, integration by parts. Much easier setup. And then if you look at this row, negative 2x times sine x is this right here. And this integral requires integration by parts again. So we do it again, and that's exactly this setup. And you see, this row is redundant because we wrote it down twice. If you, with the DI method, we just need to write it down once. And I'm going to differentiate this again, we get 2. Integrating sine, we get negative cosine x. So these two rows, it's exactly these two rows, and you have the negative right there if you would like. Yeah. Okay? And the reason I use integration by parts right here again is because this is what I call the first stop where we see the zero in the D column because when we differentiate two, we get zero. And don't forget, we still have to integrate this one more time and we will end up with negative sine x. And here's the deal. This times this is the first part of the answer we have here right here. 
and this times this is the second part of the answer which we have right here and check this out I brought up this negative right here already negative 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 so we get the positive and then lastly this times this give us the last part of the answer which I put it down right here 2 times negative sign which is right here but this is the positive because a lot of sign, negative signs here negative times negative that's why it's a positive this negative is from here right? so this negative matches with that so the answer for this I'll just put it down here so we have x squared times sine x and then plus 2x cosine x and then minus 2 sine x and of course don't forget the plus c otherwise everything's wrong no you lose a point in my class i don't know if it's everything is wrong in your class or not if you haven't learned all the integration techniques then you should check out sponsor today brilliant we are currently looking at the integral calculus course here they cover all the integration techniques that you have to know such as integration by parts and different kinds of substitutions Taking a course from Brilliant is really fun because they will keep you engaged by storytelling and cool animations. Over the past year, they have built a whole new platform for their courses that takes interactivity to the next level. You will see hands-on activities while you go through their courses, and especially they have over 60 interactive courses in math and science, and they range from beginning level to advanced level. So you will be able to find courses that you like and you can start learning something new. And I have a special link for you guys, brilliant.org slash blackpenredpen. If you use the link, you will have a 20% off discount. So go ahead and check them out, and I want to thank Brilliant for sponsoring this video. There's a third stop where I coded the repeating, factor, repeating case. You guys can check out my other video of words. So, believe in the DI method. That's it.